few minute series of the most powerful aspects, the most critical milestone aspects of the Old Testament. Uh, so let's begin. We begin at no better place than the beginning. Uh, and uh, if you turned with us, you had your Bibles and you turned with us, we would be in Genesis chapter 1. In the very first few verses, it is clear in terms of creation, how creation came about for believers. Now, if you're an atheist, agnostic, something else, uh, some other faith, it may be different. But for those of us who are believers in Christ Jesus, this is how it begins. Father, we now thank you for this time. Father, we now pray for the very uh, presence and power of your Holy Spirit all of all of those who would hear. In Jesus' name, amen. It looks like this. It says, in the beginning, we're reading from the New Living Translation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. We're going to go from the, the first few verses, and then we want to go to this verse. It's in verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1. It says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along, along, along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Them. So we see the from the very beginning, it is what some people call fiat. It, it, there is a proclamation that God makes, and everything is created. Now, I am a proponent that what we have here, because of the very fact that you can see that water was already upon the face of the deep. We could go on and on and on. Uh, and, but I don't want to get anybody confused. God makes a proclamation. Things are created. It doesn't mean that everything that we have here happened in immediate sequence before days. All right, Because as we get into the chapter, we begin to see God's work each and every day. Okay, But before the announcement of days, you see the condition of the earth. The earth, whether it's a mass, whatever it is, is matter already. So, as we look at God creating, he creates at some point in time. All right, as we see it in scripture. All right, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's just a statement that is made, that he created the heavens and the earth. But there's no, quote, time or sequence given to when this initial fiat or proclamation took place. There's no time, all right? So as we read the remainder of scripture, it doesn't mean that the proclamation and the remainder of the, 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 the story where he is, you know, calling things and putting them into position, it doesn't mean they're in immediate sequence. And we know that because there's no let there be water statement. Water is already in place. God created it, but it's already in place. He, as we read the rest of the account, let's just be factual about what's in Scripture. As we read the remainder of the account, beginning with verse 3, as it happened, then God said, let there be. Let there be light. Okay, he continued to make these statements. But you will never see a statement like, let there be water. Well, why? Because at the point that that the point that he created the earth is a different time than when you see verse three beginning. Amen. That's my explanation. We'll find out for sure when we get to heaven. But I think that's how Moses, as we see as the writer of this, lays it out. He is showing. Now let me say this one more thing. He this is creation relative to man's existence relative to humanity. What we see in scripture is creation relative to humanity's existence. There is nothing here that indicates that this is this cre is creation relative to angelic existence, relative to the existence of angels. There's no, and he created angels here. You won't see that. It is only, God is only revealing to us the 
everything that involved the creation of humanity. Angels are there, but you never see a creation statement for angels. And that is for a much greater, deeper theological discussion than in this first thing, in this first session, you know, of our, of our faith heritage in a few minutes. But that God created is what we want to be clear with. And the number two, that he created maleness and females, the first human beings. And he created them in his very likeness, meaning that these first human beings had characteristics just like him. And we can never forget, as we look at verse 26, 27, the whole point is that he makes the human beings in our image, reflecting a plurality, one God, but with a plurality of functioning. We love to say a father, a son, and a Holy Ghost. May the Lord bless you as you understand that who created the heavens and the earth. As you understand, this is about humanity's creation and all that it involves and the salvation of humanity. And then that we would understand that human beings are made in the very likeness of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you as we continue. Thank you.